So I changed the title of my presentation a little bit, or a little bit. Alba Teres is actually close to Orihuela. Uh, um, and I changed the title of my presentations for many reasons. The main reason is that last week my wife told me that she doesn't want to be married to a local historian. <laughs> so I really need to go. I really need to convince you that even though I'm going to talk about a very specific place, this is an issue, a larger issue that is related to, to more complex uh, topics, right? Uh, okay, so, so the first common and least polemical opportunity for the Moriscos to participate in public festivals was when they engaged in dance and music performances known as the Zambras. Uh, but since I'm talking to a flamenco audience, you know that Zambra is also one of the genres, uh, musical genres known today. Now, while references to Zambras are ubiquitous in festival books, legal documents, and literary texts, there are no de detailed descriptions of this musical performance. At best, we have two well-known visual documents reproducing what seems to be the Zambra. And uh, one, one is uh, Christoph. This doesn't work. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of them is uh, Christoph Vaidit's uh, drawing of Morisco performance from Granada at the beginning of the 16th century, and uh, Vincent Mestres' painting of uh, the expulsion of the Moriscos through the port of Denia in 1613, which includes a detail of Morisco musicians and uh, dancers. Zambras were not perceived to be the most imme immediate concern by religious and royal authorities at the beginning of the 16th century, and were only formally prohibited by Philip II in 1567. And I, and I say formally prohibited, I have recorded at least five instances in which Philip II watched Zambras after the pro prohibition. <laughs> in spite of sporadic persecution against the celebration of Zambras when they were performed as part of certain rit rituals such as weddings, Morisco musicians were routinely hired by Christian authorities to perform publicly throughout the, the Iberian Peninsula, both before and after the uprising of the Alpujarras in 1568. And this um, map, this partly borrowed from uh, Henri Lapère, uh, Geographie de l'Espagne Morisque, um, between the 1570s and the early 17th century, the Moriscos deported from Granada were often hired to organize ballets throughout Castile, mostly for the Corpus Christi. There are only some of the, the these and are only some of the instances, for example, in Arevalo, Ávila, Valladolid, Madrid, Alcalá de Henares, Almagro, Albacete, Lorca, and these are only some of the instances in which Morisco were hired to perform. For, the, for, the, for this reason, Carmen Sanz Ayan finds in the Zambreros of Granada one of the first signs of professionalization of performers in, in the Iberian Peninsula. While the ever-growing corpus of evidence suggests that her intuition is accurate, the Moriscos from Granada or their descendants deported to the Kingdom of Castile were not the only ones. And there is evidence that the Morisco musicians in the kingdom of Valen Valencia were also well orga organized. Unfortunately, we have only scattered inf information about these Morisco bands playing throughout the kingdom of Castile and Valencia. References are mostly anecdotal and documents do not give much food to analyze how these bands were formed and whether they functioned on a regular basis. The only case I was able to find for which we have evidence of a, a, 
um, cons consistent professional organization is for several band bands operating in the area of Orihuela, and more specifically about what I call the Zambreros of Albatera, a band operating in a small town, I mean, smaller than the graduate college, <laughs> in a small town located in, in the frontier between the kingdoms of Valencia and Murcia, and that seems to have been very popular. Evidence shows that the Zambreros of Albatera played, uh, were hired to play in places such as Mazarrón, which is in the coast, uh, the city of Murcia, and, um, and, well, and Mula, in the north. And I have also fa found evidence in Lorca, but I'm still uh, conducting research about that one. Uh, the case of Mazarrón is revealing in the 15, uh, for several reasons. In 1572, to celebrate its sep separation from the nearby city of Lorca, Mazarrón organized a festival with the usual game of games and bullfights. But they also decided to bring the Zambra to this small coastal town which is distant a two-day journey from Albatera. For this task, they charge a certain Francisco Gutiérrez, and I quote, que tiene noticia de esta zambra de Albatera, which is like, somehow he knows about this uh, zambra, which indicates that by 1572, this was a relatively new band. And indeed, the first notices we have predate this date by only one of two or two years. The other salient aspect is that the town council of Mazarrón did not contact the Moriscos directly, but wrote instead to the Lord of Albatera, El Señor de Albatera, Enrique Rocafull, as I will analyze later. In his response later, Enrique Rocafull states that the leader of the band is sick, but that his sons will perform well by themselves. It seems that the town of, town of Mazarrón was indeed satisfied as they paid, and they paid the Moriscos 10 ducados for the job. And actually, in Mazarrón, they liked the, the Zambras very much because as I keep reading, I found a, another reference five years later, and they were talking about something completely different, and they say, do you remember that happened the year the Zambreros came to play in this town? So, so they, they, they had a memory five years after that. Now, 10 years later, we find this Morisco band again in 1582 in the city of Murcia, when they were hired to play for, uh, for a festival of full bullfights and a game of canes. The contract reveals that they were four. Luis Bechiche, and you are going to hear this name again, Miguel Bechiche, Cristobal Martinez, and Gaspar Martinez, all of them from Albatera, and that they were paid seven ducados for the job, and that's a, a good amount of money. Indeed, this document indicates that they were commonly hired as they discuss how the stipend should be the same that they had received before for a previous festival also in the city of Murcia. So you, you have to mine this, all this information from these documents. In 1601, the town, township of uh, Mula paid the Moriscos of Albatera six, six ducados to perform the Zambra, plus food, for the festival to celebrate the Queen's delivery. While this succinct reference is not very informative in, on its own, it further confirms that the fame of these Zambreros reach far away cities. It, it also evinces the time span in which they developed their activity as they were active, they were active at least from the 1570s until the years preceding the expulsion in 1609. Now, uh, while the previous instances are interesting because they show the geographical and temporal reach of this band, most of the documentation about these tambras, tambreros, comes naturally from the city of Orihuela, which is um, to which Albatera belonged. The Moriscos performed regularly in this city for a great variety of occasions, which helps to reconstruct 
their organization, and how this band have evolved over the years, at least approximately. While we have no evidence of when and how this group of musicians was formed, it seems that at the beginnings, the feudal lord of Albatera, Enrique Rocafull, acted as a broker that considered this band as part of his property. It is significant that the first documented instances are accompanied by a correspondence between town councils and the Lord of Albatera. Thus, when the city of Orihuela decided to hire the Moriscos to celebrate the victory of Lepanto, and that's a funny one, in 1571, they, con they contacted Enrique Rocafull, who responded affirmatively but pointed out that they were already going to play for a wedding in Petrer, which is not, to which, for which they were going to be paid, uh, to be paid a ducados. And that's a lot of money. And um, thus, Enrique Rocafull suggested that Orihuela should pay them more than a ducados. His negotiation on behalf of the Moriscos was successful, since they were finally paid uh, about 11 ducados, the highest stipend a good document for this band, and for many other bands, I have to say. Earlier that same year, they were hired to play for a game of games in the city of Orihuela, but they were paid only three ducados. So it is clear that um, the, the, the Lord of Albatera was doing a very good job in, in, in broking for this uh, band. Uh, indirectly, it also indicates that this Morisco band was also hired for pri private ev events such as weddings, but these kind of contracts are very hard to trace and they rarely leave a paper trail. As we have seen, the town council of Mazarrón also wrote to Enrique Rocafull in 1572, which indicates that there was an awareness that the Lord of Albatera had to be contacted first for his permission, at least during the first years of this ban in the 1570s. The analysis of the documents of the Archivo Municipal de Orihuela, mostly the Manual de Consejo, and the Gibres de Claveria shows that between 1571 and 1608, Morisco musicians from near, uh, nearby towns were regularly hired to play for several festivals. <clears throat> I have identified three different periods, which more or less correspond with, with, uh, with the span of more than three decades studied here. In the first period, between the early 1570s and the mid-1580s, it is clear that the band was led by the Bechich family from Albatera. And you see the name Bechich all the time in this column, right? Most, um, the, 15, the 1572 case in Mazarron mentions that the father is sick. So I am assuming that that father is Ga Gaspar Bechich, that appears since 1575, and that at some point he was re replaced by his son, Luis Bechich. That, that's all the speculation, another proof for you. There are also spare mentions to the Moscapar family, and there is, uh, I'm going to say there is some kind of competition between two families. From the, uh, from the nearby, nearby towns of Redovana La Granja, which is, suggests some kind of competition. In a second period during the 1590s, uh, it is hard to reach any kind of conclusive interpretation because there are too many gaps in the documents for those years. But the extant documentation indicates that the Pechic family was displaced by the Moscapar family coming from Elche. But then, in the first years of the 17th century, we see once again the name of Luis Pechic. So what happens here? This time he identified as living in Koch. That's important. Um, why? And very usually uh, in association with another dancer named uh, Frances Farage, also from Koch. Koch. Sorry. 
Gosh. This may indicate that we are dealing with two different performances named uh, Luis Bechich, probably father and son. The first Luis Bechich performed between the 1570s at the beginning of the 1580s, but for some reason he disappeared from the extant documentation. By the beginning of the 17th century, a second Luis Bechich, or the same Luis Bechich, but he had to be very old, and came to place and reinvigorated the name of the band. Now, there is something striking about the name and origin of this band. All the documents in Oriwell in the 17th century identify him, Luis Bechich, as living in Koch, which, by the way, is just five kilometers, out, kilometers away from Albatera. Uh, it's just a one-hour walk, right? However, when the town of Mula hired them in 1601, they were called again Los Moriscos de Albatera. Now, this small but significant detail suggests that we are fi facing some sort of branding here. And that even if these Morisco music musicians were actually living in Kosh, and actually they were not from the area, they were from Elda, uh, they were still known as the Moriscos of Albatera, la Th Los Zambreros de Albatera, as, as they were known in the 1570s and 1580s, arguably to capitalize on the famous name of the previous band. And that's the reason for the, uh, for the misleading title of uh, my presentation. Even if I'm talking about muse uh, Morisco musicians coming from different towns in the area of Orihuela. Now, um, for, I have to say, for those of you who, who are expert in modern music, for you, branding may be a common thing, but for people working with uh, early modern material, with the early, early modern period, Branding is very rare. We don't usually have the name of people and we don't have name for bands. That's, that's very unusual. Now, for what kinds of occasions did they play? Ah. So first there, are, first, there are special events. And uh, that's the first column, such as the Queen's arrival to Spain in um, 1571, the victory of Lepanto in 1571, <laughs> No, no, it gets better, it gets better. All, uh, all the viceroy's uh, visit to the city of Orihuela in 1575. Now, I have placed an interrogation mark for 1585, because that year there was a Japanese embassy traveling through Portugal, Castile, and Italy. And this Japanese embassy, they visited Orihuela in January of that year. It was a highly publicized embassy, as it symbolized the evangelization mission in Asia. I like to imagine the Japanese visitors enjoying the performance of the Moriscos of Albatera. <laughs> I like to imagine it. But unfortunately, the extant records for this year are very scanned, and I have no way to prove that that meeting took place yet. I'm still looking for that document. <laughs> Now, in most of these instances, the zambras were intended as a complement of the game of canes, a juego de cañas. Now, uh, for those of you who doesn't know, uh, the game of canes, a juego de cañas, is an equestrian mock battle in which participants, all of them, dressed as moors and throw spears uh, at each other. And I refer here to studies by Barbara Fuchs, uh, Teofilo Ruiz, or Mayon. Uh, I just published a book on that. There is much less information about the music for the Game of Games. Just now, what I want to talk now. Because both festival books and municipal records focus on clothing as a central element of the organization, while the presence of musicians is usually acknowledged only in passing. Morophil literature indirectly confirms the connection between the Game of uh, Juego de Cañas and the Zambras in Moorish performances organized by Christians, since they are often mentioned together in the fanciful recreations of 15th century Granada, most notably in the Moorish ballad composed at the end of the 16th, 16th century and in the first part of Ginés Pérez de Ita's Guerras Civiles de Granada. And uh, for you who doesn't know, uh, Ginés Pérez de Ita is from Lorca. So 
Ginez Pérez de Ita quite probably met these tambreos de Albatera many times. It is also common to find the moriscos playing, and now I go to the third column, for the festival of the Corpus Christi, I'm sorry, the second column. The Corpus Christi has happened in many other cases uh, throughout the kingdom of Castile. Most of the cases, uh, yeah, so in Castile, which makes, a, makes us wonder about what kind of performance is the Stambra. Is it merely musical or does it involve some sort of dancing? The extant iconography suggests that there was some sort of dancing involved in the musical performance, but it is not clear what is the role of the musicians. In the case of Orihuela, it is clear, however, that in the early 17th century, the zambrero Luis Becic played in tandem with the dancer Frances Farage, which reveals that they had two different, uh, they had differentiated roles in the performance. Now, it is probably more striking to see these moriscos regularly participating in festivals of moros y cristianos. For instance, the Thamba of Albatera played for the celebrations of the Battle of Lepanto in 1571, which staged the victory of the Holy League over the Ottoman Empire with an urban performance, as I, as I just mentioned. Now, the Battle of Lepanto is an exceptional event that was celebrated in similar ways throughout the Iberian Peninsula. More tellingly, Morisco musicians were also regularly hired to perform for the local festival of Santa Juste Rufina on July 17th, which is the third column, which celebrated the conquest of the city by the Christians, most usually with festivals of Moros y Cristianos. That is stage mock battles between Muslims and Christians. For instance, we can see a detailed script of the festival of Moros y Cristianos of 1579 that instructs that the Morisco musicians should be located on the towel bell of the church of Santa Justa to play a thumbra. None of the documents, I guess that's my time. Ah, uh, well, wow. one part. Uh, Sounded like a thumbra to me. Now, none of the documents I consulted here made any comment about the Moriscos, how the Moriscos felt about the participation in these festivals that celebrated the victory of Christianity over Islam, or about how all Christians perceived Morisco participation. But based on the frequency and consistency of the presence, it seems that no one considered it an, as an anomaly. Even, uh, even if we should not be too deterministic, in relating mentions of the Zambras and Moriscos, not all Zambreros were necessarily Moriscos, there is evidence that organizers of urban festivals often looked for professionalized Morisco performers to participate as musicians. As all these instances show how Moriscos were regularly asked to perform a certain specific form of Moorishness. We can imagine that when asked to perform, Moriscos quite probably catered to the expectations of all Christian pa uh, patrons, adopting their own musical traditions to the techniques of Moorishness as cra crafted by the Christian literary and ceremonial imagination. Thank you. I think that we have a little time for a couple of questions now, and maybe after Professor Barbara's um, uh, presentation, also some more questions. But maybe if there's any immediate reaction to any of the points. Your wife should be proud. I don't <laughs> that. Well, she, she always tell me, please don't use me in public conference. <laughs> Okay, there are some questions. All right. Yeah, first of all, thank you for as much as possible. So, first of all, let's talk about the other locations. It's very exciting. So, I wanted to ask you about um, <laughs> and more generally about some of the stuff that we gestured towards at the end, which is, you know, uh, one of the things I noticed over the course of the whole conference, right, is this question of the 
identitarian you know, identification of dance. And I think you're showing, you're suggesting, if I, if I do correctly, at this very early point, right, that there's very much of a dialogic construction of what is expected of us so that we can be hired out and do this thing that is Moorish <laughs> for mm -hmm. a Christian audience. And that there's this, I mean, it, it's in an economy of constructiveness, right? Because you have the ones with Lucianos and mm -hmm. the Sombreros and Teresaita. And are, you, are you suggesting that, um, that, that what we're seeing beyond the commercialization of these particular musicians is a, is a broader than the commercialization of? This is a demand for Moorishness, something that, that I didn't mention. The rise of this band takes place precisely after the war of the Alpujarras. And I, that, I'm, I'm starting to see that evidence clearly when I went back, is that in Mazarrón and in Lorca, they used to hide their sombreros in Antas. In Almeria, you play, it, 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 Almeria is part of the Kingdom of Granada. But after the war, the Alpujarras, all the moriscos from Granada are expelled from the Kingdom of Granada. So they say, okay, where do we look for the Zambra now? Mm. And that's when they go to Orihuela. That's when the Zambra of Orihuela is famous. So there was a demand for that. I did it. Sorry, I'm. I'm oh, so, so I guess what's interesting. Desire for it that in part is born of the Apple Progress and all of its outcomes? Or do you think that it's now that, um, that what's surprising is that it continues, like we continue to want the Sambra? What, it, what is surprising is that the demand for the Sambra takes place before the war of the Alpujarras and continues without, with no uh, after that. And it could be mixed with, uh, we were talking about racism. They could be very, ra in Lorca, in Lorca there was a, a huge anti-Morisco position, precisely because there were a lot of, there were a lot of Moriscos trying to, to return to Granada. So they went to Lorca because it is the frontier city and there was, they were repressed all the time. Actually, when the, th the Moriscos of Granada tried to play the Zambra, they immediately, immediately prohibited it. They had to be the Moriscos from, from outside, right? So I'm sorry. But, but weren't these prohibition nationwide, but Philip the Second? Yes? Weren't the prohibition nationwide, but Philip the Second? Like they, they were issued by the so called crown of Spain. Yes. Right? Even the massacre of the Alpujarras were precisely came about because the people our people were to rebel against their culture being castrated and eliminated from the face of the earth, which is what Queen of the City was doing. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, um, I, I think there is some, um, we are, there, there is a history, uh, historiographical paradigm in which we think that this cultural repression is the cause of the uprising. There, there might be other socio-economical causes for the uprising to take place. I mean, that, that's maybe. But in any case, what is, what is evident is that this highly publicized prohibition, oh, it was not obeyed any time. I mean, and as I said, even Philip II liked to listen to the Zambra. And I have many instances throughout this in his travels to Valencia and to, Al to Albacete. So he did not really care. The Zambra was forbidden in paper, on paper, but it was performed all the time. So I, I probably, one, one I probably the last question. one because. La last, last question. Yeah, this is very quick. And this is just to give it like a big, big overview that it's so interesting how Kevin and I were talking about how these things keep reappearing. So like playing Moorishness, and of course in minstrelsy in America, playing blackness, and the whole idea of having to play yourself in order to sell yourself, <laughs> in order to make a living, in order to be in this society that really yes. was yours. Anyway, right, yeah, yeah. dot, dot, dot. <laughs> yeah.
Excellent. The family. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. that point. Thank you.